Now, let's think about the urban case. Uh, putting farms inside cities. That's a bit revolutionary, but if you can do it, if you've got the mind to do it, if you know a, a, a lot somewhere that's uh, being untouched by all means, take that up and make your little farm. Uh, the reason why I would heavily back this idea is that we don't have enough green, if you'll notice, in our cityscapes, right? And we're always needing, as, as biological beings, we're needing to be around life in all its forms. In the urban, we can get so rushed around, go here, go there, get your job done, uh, you know, do your grocery shopping, everything. You don't, you don't naturally think about the biology that you're going to pass along the way. But by being an urban farmer, by taking some of the land that you know is available, that you can do something with, and we'll talk about this because this gets really complicated in most countries. Uh, but uh, you, you then, you become someone who brings at least a slip of consciousness in this manner back to people all day long as they walk by your, your little green strip. Now, yes, it is susceptible to a lot of vandalism, to theft, uh, to, you know, there's a lot of idiots. Yeah, there's a lot of idiots, in this, especially in the cities, but um, I find that in the country, uh, in the rural areas, they, they, there tends to be less as far as crops go, unless you've pissed them off, of course, and then, uh, you know, they're going to sabotage you every time. But in the city, they don't even have to know you. It's just something to do um, because there is so, uh, life is shreft of choices, at least in the minds of the young people, in the minds of the gangs. It's all about control and power and uh, who, who belongs here and, hey, what are you doing in my neighborhood and all this kind of thing. Uh, I, I would propose that we cut into that. We cut into that uh, negativity and that violence and that hard edge that uh, a lot of folks can take on in the urban environment, including the working folks. Uh, you know, you'll notice people don't tend to look look at you in the eye. Uh, they might look at look at your presentation, look at your shoes, uh, sort of size you up and judge you. But they won't look at you. They won't look at your face. Um, and when we bring green, when we bring organic back into the landscape and they pass it by and they say, oh, that's really a lovely pumpkin flower that's well formed. Uh, you know, the, oh, oh, the grown tomatoes, look at over there. Oh, you know, look at the herbs here. You know, look, at, look at these flowers growing. You know, um, everybody has snapshots of these lovely times when we were kids especially uh, that we like to be called back to when anybody is keeping a farm and maybe it's just going to be a flower garden because you just can't trust uh, the local people uh, to let you grow something pure they're going to poison the ground or you know so you just grow flowers you just grow herbs you just grow ornamentals and you just make it look nice and this is an act of not only heroism and uh, courage, it takes courage and sacrifice, but it's also an act of revolution because you'll notice a lot of the nice things in life, the soft things in life, the beautiful things, beauty is wanting to be shreft from our picture every chance that uh, the controlling factions uh, can get. They want to remove the beauty. When the beauty is removed from our world, from our lives, it comes out of our souls. We, we end up having diluted souls, if you will, uh, emptier souls, souls with less 
uh, transmission to Earth, transmission to universe, transmission to each other. And I think we get affected in these sort of negative ways, in these sort of uh, incomplete manners. Uh, it takes a little bit of our humanity away. We need beauty. I do. Um, beautiful woman walks down the street. Beautiful man walks down the street. What's your reaction? Damn. You know, you see beautiful flower. It's like, wow. Doesn't matter how many times you see these things. All your life, if you're still breathing, if you're still alive, you need beauty. So bring it. This is my message. Bring it now. Details. No. <laughs> yeah. When you're when you're in the urban and you're doing one of these wacko things, and okay, uh, one of the first things to think about is how do you get permission? Uh, how do you find out? whose land it is, you got to go to the local zoning board or the local, um, every country is different, so I can't tell you, it's just too many, too many countries, um, you know, city hall or your government center, ask who owns this piece of land and, and then uh, contact them and, and ask permission very nicely, just say, I just want to bring beauty, I just want to make your land fertile. Uh, arable, usable, for whatever you might want to use it for in the future, and I want to bring beauty into my neighborhood. I'm tired of the concrete. I'm tired of the coldness. And um, more often than not, people will agree to it, and they'll say, well, you know, we got plans to build, and that we're waiting for the right price, and da-da-da, which is quite often the case in the urban uh, but uh, you just do it on that basis, you know, it's a temporary basis, it's fine. So you get your permission, and then you got to worry about the police and the cops, you know, the local jurisdictions, and are you doing something illegal? And, yeah, you might want to check that out. Every country, of course, is very different. Uh, the reason why I play away games, I live out here in the world, I live out here in the international, in the developing world so-called, is that um, it tends to be a lot looser as far as, you know, not having to look over your shoulder, oh, this is illegal, oh, you have to have a stamp for this, you got to have a permit for that, um, and it's much freer out here, and I've been able to do a lot more work, you know, I'm setting up camp here with my camera on a daily basis, uh, wanting to get messages out to you, it could be anywhere in the world. And nobody's, nobody cares that I'm doing this. In some countries, you know, you're going to have some people approaching. Do you have a permit, you know, for setting up a, you know, for, for is this a commercial operation? So, um, the simplicity, the point of all that, the simplicity uh, needs, I believe, needs to be brought back into our midst. The simplicity of life, the simplicity of of being able to manage and get around and get along with others. So uh, you've got these possible difficulties, but I would say go through it because that's hero work. It's There's never a right time and it's never going to be easy. But is it worthwhile? I would say damn near 100% unless you end up dying over it or something like that. But no, just us when we're in the pursuit of something that we feel is right it gives us power we have power we are empowered i don't like that word because it suggests we didn't have power and now we're getting power but we feel our power coming out manifesting it's always been there let it let's manifest it by doing things like this now you're going to need fertilizer you're going to need organics um, and in the city uh, you know, you can't just find a field of grass growing around the corner or uh, cows, uh, you know, walking the streets like they do in India and Nepal, like here. So, uh, and I don't recommend, unfortunately, going into the supermarket where you can get these kind of manures on occasion, but don't buy those because those are blasted and irradiated and pasteurized and God knows what. Maybe you can grow vegetables with it, but this is not the way it came out, the animal. Uh, the, 
you know, uh, society tends to be quite queasy when it comes to this kind of stuff. I don't have to tell you that. Nobody likes the smell of any of that around either. So if you buy a bag and it's all sterilized, yeah, maybe they don't have to smell it. Ugh. You know, they might ask you, oh, what's in the ground there? Did you put shit in the ground? Are you, are you shitting in the ground? So uh, <clears throat> there is a public paranoia that you have to sort of face. So how do your responses when you're out there digging in your, in your f little farm plot there? People are going to come up and they're going to accuse you and they're going to be a little, uh, you know, they're going to put you on the defensive. But have your responses ready. This is a good thing to do regardless of where you're at it, in any situation when you're dealing with strange humans, people that you don't know. But uh, you know, in particular, you know, they ask you if you're, if you're using shit and all this kind of thing. And you say, yeah, but it's, uh, it's buried, and it's exactly what the plants are going to need to become the most beautiful and strong and healthy for, for everybody. I uh, give them answers like this and be very calm and uh, do not create problems, more problems than they're creating. So, uh, and I, I hope this is not a rambling topic for you to where it, it's, it, has, it holds no interest for you. It's just something that isn't talked about, but there's so many of you. Know, the majority of you out there, you're living in a city, or you're living in a very large town or something. You haven't got much green around. So we have to discuss these things because we have to account for all of you out there, right? We can't leave any of you behind, can't leave any of you out. So, but it can be done. Urban farms, urban landscapes, urban flowerscapes, urban uh, greenscapes. Uh, for example, Detroit is in, in the U.S., um, I guess, it has, in, in an urban environment, it's got more private farms. I don't use the word garden, by the way. You might know that. But garden, to me, just doesn't sound serious. Garden is just like, oh, you know, mother's tinkering around in the in the back garden, and Aunt Milda's got her garden. And uh, when I say farming, I mean we apply all the principles. And garden, you can do whatever you like, and trial and error, and that's all fine. But in a farm, we're we're pretty serious. We're pretty on it uh, as far as producing something. I don't care if it's flowers or trees or vegetables or, or what what have you. But uh, when you're farming, there are certain things that we adhere to, and um, we we don't want to go about it flippantly. We really want to pay attention to our earth, to our nature, and uh, do things correctly. Okay. Uh, this is a bit rambling, but so you get, you have to locate, and we've got this oracle nowadays. Any of us can, can look these things up. Look in your search. Don't use Google. Use brave.com, by the way. This is just a little tip. If you want to be uh, fairly protected, get brave.com uh, browser with the search. Anyway, yeah, to stay off of this agenda. So you search in there for uh, organic manures, organic fertilizers, Detroit or London, or Bombay, uh, Mumbai, wherever you live. See what happens, see what comes up. Uh, see how natural you can get fertilizer. See where uh, there are just uh, uh, cattle farms in the vicinity of your town. See where these things exist that you, you can use and then see if, uh, you know, you can take a train, you can take a bus. Uh, you know, you got to worry about smell here, but where you can get manure, you can make an arrangement with the farmer, just walk up and you tell him, hey, this is what I'm doing. I know it's crazy and this might smell on the way home, but... Uh, you know, I really want to give this a go. It's in my, I just can't get it out of my head, can't get it out of my heart. If you help me out, I would be your friend for life. You know, if you just give me a, a pile of this stuff, because if you're going on your own, you got your little plot, 
you're you're not going to need a tremendous amount, but the more you can get, the better off you're going to be. Then when you you, you want to take it in a in a probably a fiberglass bag or something uh, that's not going to transmit spout smells and uh, put it in several bags maybe. And if the farmer's got any grass, by all means, uh, put as much grass in there as you've got manure because that's going to be your really quick uh, uh, compost, right? So you get the whole you get the whole deal from the farmer if you're lucky, and you you bundle that up uh, very tightly, close it up very tight, bring it back with you, and uh, you go home with that, and then. Uh, when you are uh, preparing your cells and uh, you're digging down to where you're going to dump in your manures because you took one of one of uh, Simple Life courses or you learned it online, one or the other, and you know how to do that and uh, you have your bag sitting there, uh, you might want to undo it and uh, you know kind of keep it keep it closed and you dig down and you quick open that up, you take your manure and your and your grass, you mix it together, quickly cover it up, uh, you know, before anybody comes and spies and says, oh, 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 you know, and uh, you know what that's like. So, uh, but anything that can be done out in the rural can be done in the urban. There's no reason why not. You, um, it just takes a little ingenuity, it takes a little research, it takes a little courage it takes you being being willing to go off and do this crazy thing hey if nothing else you know you go to a cocktail party people ask you what you're doing their their jaws are going to drop because this just isn't done anymore so be a revolutionary you know be somebody unique stand out i know you know we many of us claim we don't want to be someone special we don't want people to look up to us and be the focus of attention but sometimes it's nice sometimes it's nice why because you did something with these so we come back to that topic because you weren't afraid to use these you got over your fear of it maybe you walked out the door and they say okay I'm doing something I'm afraid of I'm afraid of doing this because you haven't done it ever in your life and you're just what the fuck but you go out the door you, the main thing is you go out the door and you do what needs to be done and you get a very strong hoe. Now if you live in the States you got no clue what that is. But in the rest of the world, you know, this English kind of hoe, Asadon in Spain, uh, has many names obviously all over the world. But this one tool, this three-dimensional tool that you can chop into the ground and then just easily pick up ground and move ground with it and shape ground with it is your friend for life and it will save you your back it will save you time and you'll end up creating wonderful effects once you get used to using this tool in all of its forms and permutations of use so uh, you know urban people out there you know do not be info tourists uh, when you when you dial into the simple life please uh, you know, nobody has an excuse. Nobody gets away with this, with, with doing nothing. Everybody here can be activists. And uh, the second you put a tool into the ground, you're an activist nowadays because nobody wants to do it, right? So, before I repeat myself to death and really bore you to tears, let me sign off here and just say good luck. And I really want to hear from people. Uh, I'm on Udemy. You can you can look at the bioorganic farming and whatnot. Uh, there's a free course, uh, the way of uh, the way of the practical life. So you know you can get in on the Udemy, and then from there you can message me. And I'm I'm checking messages all the time. And I'm sad to say, very sad to say that after nine years, uh, the amount of messages has has trickled down. Uh, I don't get so many like I used to. Uh, I used to love hearing people's stories or uh, a acting upon their requests or their, their questions. So, anyway, uh, this is the, the fourth lecture in the Lakeside series leading up to live courses in Spain. And I, yeah.
yes, I'm in Nepal making videos for Spain. It really doesn't matter where you are. Since we're in the urban case here, I thought I'd bring a little urban in the backs, in the backscape there. Um, but we, what I'd like to create or what I'd like to um, tap into, because the, the river always is flowing, tap into folks uh, of like, of like motion, of like, of like action. I don't like this this idea of like mind. Like mind, okay, yeah, but that only suggests that everybody's sitting around like talking heads, blah, 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 blah. We got too much of that. I want like action, like movers, like doers. So um, I'm hoping to turn, not me turning you into anything because you have the potential in you but I give you maybe a little reminder, a little, a little nudge, and um, you know, hopefully, you know, we make the very smallest difference in our midst, in our neighborhoods. But the smallest difference is is a huge thing energetically. Okay, and I'm going to sign off with that. Thank God. Huh? Okay, and I believe we're going to have another one or two of these uh, before I'm done. So look for that and off I go.